So here we are for another another day of stupid geek tricks. Uh, so one of my questions, again, I, I really think about this whole concept of institutional relationships. Can an institution, can a facility itself have a relationship with people? And so one of the important things with that is the idea of actually being able to identify people, right? How do you know a person is a person? And then how do you track them geographically, possibly all over the world? Uh, so you can do facial ID obviously. But one of the things I've been thinking about is basically the idea of using Bluetooth addresses. Since we all have uh, things like this, things like smartphones in our pockets, uh, they they uh, they broadcast their Bluetooth ID, their Bluetooth address. Uh, one of my questions is, hey, uh, can we use that Bluetooth address as a way to actually be able to track people for any number of reasons? Uh, imagine using this in a retail environment uh, to see how many people come into the store, uh, how many people are repeat customers, that type of deal. Imagine from an IoT standpoint, basically, uh, if if a Bluetooth address is detected, then a specific Bluetooth address is detected, then the lights turn on or the lights turn off. Doors are open or doors lock, that type of thing. Or if you want to be super, super creepy, uh, imagine setting up a, a whole bunch of basically uh, Bluetooth scanners uh, all around a city or something like that. And they just sit there and they scan uh, for these Bluetooth uh, addresses. Uh, see when one pops up and when it does they store it and then they can track people uh, all around the, uh, the city or the country or any of that kind of, kind of thing uh, one of my ideas with this too is to basically use a camera uh, so that you take a you, you scan for the Bluetooth addresses you then take a picture uh, and then follow on for this particular project is actually dumping these Bluetooth addresses into a database. And so then you can start trying to associate the address itself with particular people. And again, it's that whole question of, I don't know, I think it'll be kind of a curious thing. Uh, so uh, to be clear, uh, the, the tool that I'm using is actually built into Ubuntu. It's called Bluetooth CTL. Uh, you can see that you can use that to scan for Bluetooth addresses. And basically I've just simply used a Python script uh, to scan for Bluetooth addresses, <clears throat> dump that information into a file, take a picture using the webcam, uh, dump all of that information into a file uh, and then use PHP to dynamically write these web pages. Uh, so if we go over here, we can take a look. Uh, again, basically, this is just simply the Python script, literally uh, just using os.system uh, to the command Bluetooth CTL timeout five scan. So it's got five uh, scan for five seconds. Then using grep, it's going to look for any line that has device in it. And then it's going to dump that into the bt.txt file. Uh, we then have the, uh, the script essentially to take a picture here um, and then down here uh, what is simply going to happen is we're actually going to just write out all of the information uh, into a log file uh, with uh, with the, the timestamp uh, the picture name and then the an array uh, of all of the different Bluetooth addresses uh, we then have a PHP um, script here. Uh, not too bad. 18 lines or whatever of code. Uh, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to uh, turn uh, the bt underscore, bt underscore log dot text file into an array. We're going to reverse sort. So the latest image in the scan is first. And then we're going to do for each. We're going to go through uh, that every single line in that particular file in order to dynamically build this web page. And so at the top we see time code for when this picture was taken. So here is the picture. Uh, when the picture was taken uh, here are um, all of the Bluetooth addresses that were also captured. And we can go and we can just see as I've been doing this today and we get different pictures. So right now the picture is just simply, the camera is just simply pointed at me. Uh, but imagine if this camera was at the back of a room and so it just simply took pictures of everybody in a room. Imagine if you had multiple cameras, uh, they were uh, taking pictures with timestamps and then you could you could look from different angles angles uh, when these uh, when these Bluetooth addresses were captured. Uh, we can go here and just to see how the script runs. Uh, all I do is I simply run the script uh, Python 3 take pick.py and it's going to go through and again it times out in five seconds. So you can time it out in five seconds, you can time it out in 10 seconds, and time it out in 60 seconds I suppose if you want. Uh, the longer or the longer it is to time out the more addresses you'll probably pick up. So we can see we got those particular addresses. Uh, we can go here, we can do a refresh and uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yay! Doesn't that look so good? Here let's uh, let's do this again. I'll put a little thumb up so we can see that I'm actually taking this picture in real time. There we go. 
Uh, and then we can go, and then we can refresh. And <laughs> <laughs> I look like a prisoner. Anyways, we're not. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a movie star here. Uh, and so again, so again, we see the the image. Um, we can see how many devices were discovered. So 21 uh, devices were discovered uh, when I took this particular picture. Uh, so on and so forth. One of the interesting things people said, but Eli, how do you know that the identifier? Um, that you can actually identify things uh, based off of the MAC address. Uh, apparently with Bluetooth low energy, it's supposed to give out a random MAC, or is, I'm sorry, not a MAC address. It's supposed to give out a random Bluetooth address that if you then have, oh, the, the key or whatever, the hash, you can then understand what the actual uh, address is. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to look into that more. But what I've been looking at is if we take a look, uh, basically I just copied this particular address here. And if I hit enter, you can see it was recognized in this particular picture. If I hit enter and again, you'll see it was recognized in that particular picture, that particular picture, that particular picture, that particular picture, and that particular picture, that particular. Uh, there's multiple ones in these things. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have been I have been informed that these are supposed to be random addresses that are not trackable. <laughs> that is what I've been told. What what have I told you folks about believing what you are told? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a time code thing. Maybe it's a time series. Like it'll only give out this particular uh, Bluetooth address for an amount of time. Uh, but again, you know, if it's 24 hours or whatever, it might still actually be useful for me. The other thing to be thinking about, uh, I'm using Bluetooth CTL, CTLs on the actual computer itself. So the computer, the computer itself is actually scanning for these addresses. So I don't know, maybe if there is some kind of encryption routine, maybe it's actually unencrypting the Bluetooth address so that it can communicate with it, so that the security procedure that's supposedly created doesn't actually work that well. I don't know. That's something to think about too. Uh, so anyways, uh, the next thing that I want to do with this um, is basically dump, uh, dump these values into a database. Uh, and then what will be really cool is then we can scan. So we can see how often uh, certain MAC addresses are seen. Uh, again, we can, uh, if it's in a database, we can have a little field so we can start trying to assign who we think these MAC addresses are for, uh, that type of deal. Um, and we can start doing some, some interesting stuff like that. And again, you can correlate. So if you, know, if you know the physical location of this, basically you plug in the GPS coordinates of this one, and then you set this up and you plug in the GPS coordinates of this one and they plug in the GPS coordinates of like 50 other ones. Uh, and then if they're all scanning throughout the day, you can actually see people move around. And uh, what's curious here too is, is notice this for associations. Uh, so one of the big things, um, whether it's marketing or whether it's intelligence, it's not simply about you. Like everybody thinks it's about you, you being tracked, but it's also who you associate with. So can you create a script? Obviously you can create a script. So you can start to see the association Okay, when I see this particular Bluetooth address, I also 20% of the time see these other Bluetooth addresses. So these people probably have a relationship. And then if you go out to the next level, okay, who does these people have a relationship with? And who do these people have a relationship with? Um, yes, and it gets creepy. It gets creepy really quick. I do want to be clear. I do want to be clear here. This is not hacking. This is not hacking. It's just simply a Linux tool. <laughs> that listens to the information your devices are broadcasting and then happens to save that information. Uh, is this GDPR compliant? I have no idea because I'm an American. I'm an American. <laughs> and in America, we don't give a damn about your privacy. <laughs> if we have an option between a buck and your privacy, we're going to take a buck. If we, if we have the option between making a penny and your privacy... Uh, we're still going to take that penny. So, uh, so I don't know. If you're in the UK, you might not want to do this project. But we're in the US, so we're going to rock and roll with this thing. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is this is the real world. Some some of the kind of interesting things. Uh, that, that again, this is just uh, completely out there. Uh, there is nothing overly complicated about it. Again, the entire... Uh, uh, the entire script for this, uh, even with taking the picture, is literally 41 lines of code. And uh, if I was better at writing code, <laughs> it could be less. I, mean, I could probably do this literally in about 30 lines of code. I'm just, you know, I'm just me. So anyways, as always, uh, put your comments down below. Put, give us a thumbs down or a thumbs up. 
thumbs downs are okay. Interactions, it's a YouTube world. Any action, interaction will do. Please give us an interaction. Please give us a comment. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Prove to me that lessons in technology actually matter. Uh, and with that, I'm going to keep, uh, keep working on this little project, and I will see you folks later.